Canada. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just going to give it a minute or two for you to come on in and we're going to begin talking. I'm just going to share it here. We're just going to give you a few minutes to come on in, guys. We have something in store for you on today. We have uh, Miss Laura Norman with us on today. And um, myself, Kathy Nobles, Lady C. Nobles here. And um, go and grab a friend. Go and grab your, your coffee, your brunch, and come on back. You can even come in person if you would like to. Um, to 824 Northside Drive in Moultrie, Georgia. We are right here in the Greater Believers uh, Worship Center, House of the Lord. Amen. So, Laura, we want to thank you for coming out on today. Um, we're just so happy that you could be with us on today. So, come on in. Come on in. All right. So, you ready to get started? Yes. All right. So, today's topic is training up your child or training up a child in the way that they should go. But when they're old, they shall not depart. So, that scripture is coming from Proverbs 22 and 6. And um, we want to just talk about that. We want to talk about, we want to break that scripture down. Um, we want to just kind of expound on that and make sure that we have the right definition and make sure that they, we are we are actually understanding that scripture. So, Train up a child in the way that you go, but when they're old, they shall not depart. Proverbs 22 and 6. All right, Laura, what do you think about that scripture? What what does it mean to you? How would you explain that scripture? Um, I think that the main thing is we have to be faithful to train our children in the way, which is the way of Christ, the word, the things that he taught, the the way that he lived, and if we are faithful to do that, then he will be faithful to do the rest in our children's lives. And that does not mean necessarily that just because you, first of all, we're not going to do everything perfectly, but just because you did everything, mm -hmm. that you're never going to have a struggle or your children are never going to have a struggle, but it means that God is faithful to do what he said he would do if we are faithful to do what our part and do what we were supposed to do. Right. Right. I, I believe that. And and when I look at that scripture, when it says train up a child, so training, you're, you're leading the child, you're guiding the child, you are directing your child, and you are teaching your child. So all of that goes uh, in the sense of training. So when you're training, you're doing all of these things. And when you, in order to, to lead your child and to train your child, even just like on a job, when you are placed in a position, you are the head mm -hmm. and you are responsible for showing them the way. Mm -hmm. So in order to be uh, in a position to effectively train and teach your child, you have to be prayed up right. and geared up and equipped to do that. You right. know, not all of us are you equipped. Yeah, you can't <laughs> teach them how to do something you're not doing yourself. Right, right. You gotta be a great role model. Right. You have to be equipped um, with the word of God because a lot of us don't know what to do. You know, we don't know how to do it. We have to make sure that we are um, being a great role model. We have to make sure that we uh, are organized mm -hmm. because if you're not organized, then how can you um, get your kids together and, or, and make sure that they are organized, make sure that they are going in the right, right direction. In order to direct someone, you have to have an organizational pathway. You have to have a, a, or you have to be led in a certain direction and you have to know what you're doing and you have to be organized. So I would say organizational skills would be a plus as well. Like a prayer life, um, being organized, being equipped, being prayerful, um, and just having the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that your mind is 
at peace and that you're listening to God to make sure you're able to steer them in the right direction. Right. Because if you're if your life is chaotic, then <laughs> it's gonna be hard for the kids to follow your lead, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be very hard. Um, I would also think that with this scripture, most people may actually think that um, it means if I'm training up my child, then they're they should be exempt from their rebellious teenage years. They're thinking it's supposed to go perfect. Well, Lord, I'm you know I'm trying. I'm doing everything you said to do. I'm training them up the best of my ability. Why is this happening? Mm -hmm. Well, it's their teenage years. <laughs> it's a terrible too. You know, <laughs> it's like things are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're gonna be exempt from anything. Right. You know, they're gonna go through the regular struggles that a child goes through. Would you agree or disagree with that? Like, I think your thoughts? I think it depends on the child to a large degree mm -hmm. because some children are you can see it from toddler years are more rebellious by nature mm -hmm. some children are more they want their rule followers right so it that it greatly depends on the personality of the child mm -hmm. and i have some of both <laughs> and so it it's i i can remember when my oldest son was young recognizing in his life um the pull of the world okay regardless of how hard i mean what we were doing everything we knew to do to train him up in the way of the word mm -hmm. and i could still we could still see the pull of the world so strong and, and the battle that was going on for his life mm -hmm. and so there that battle is always there and different children have different struggles and go through different things and react different ways. And that that's where you have to get to the point where you just said, you know, you know pray. It's, it's, we say, I feel like church lingo says this a lot as well. All you can do is pray, mm -hmm. you know, but that's, that is huge. And so diligently praying for your children, praying for wisdom for yourself. Mm -hmm. And also, when something doesn't go right or you mess up, being willing to say, you know what, I I messed up on this thing. I'm mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. It's like I just told you earlier, you know, I, I told my oldest son, you know, I'm new to this. Mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know what I'm doing. I've never navigated through the teenage years before. Right. And so being able to admit I don't know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. or you know what? I just really messed that up. I, mm -hmm. I handled that wrong. I should have handled it differently. And but being open and communicating with your children, mm -hmm. I'm trying to do my best. Mm -hmm. I I'm trying to, you know, ask the Lord for wisdom in in handling this situation. But sometimes I'm gonna I mess up and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I feel like definitely every child is different, but it does not, I don't think it ever means you're exempt from, I mean, because we live in a fallen world, right. and the pull of the world is there because, you know, the enemy is trying to destroy them. Mm -hmm. And so we have to pull that much harder when the world's pulling, you know. Right. So, right. It, yeah, it definitely does not mean anybody's exempt from anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, I would like to add to that. It, it also doesn't mean that we should be comparing the way we rear our children to someone else. Uh -huh. I can't compare how I'm raising my child to you. Uh -huh. You may have um, a different background and, you, and you're and you giving that tough love, but that's what you know to do. Uh -huh. And yes, they're going to be raised differently. I may have a, a background where I was um, abused, uh -huh. you know, unfortunately. And if I have that background and when I have my children, I may not want to um, spank them as much as you. Right. Or I may not even want to spank them at all. Right. But, you know, you know, the Bible does say, spare the rod, you know, spare the child. Yeah. So we, we, do, we are supposed to discipline our children, but they're going to be some, they're going to be a different way that each person does that. And... I probably wouldn't want to just listen to you come in and, and tell me how to do this if you if I know that you don't know my background. Right. If you don't know my story and you don't know my struggle, then I, 
I may not necessarily want to listen to you, <laughs> um, but if you are compassionate and you know me and you're you're saying, hey, sis, I, I see you, where you're struggling a little bit. Can, can we talk? You know, I would love to. It's the way you come, you know, uh, across to someone and maybe you could um, show or give some, some word of wisdom, some mm-hmm. advice to another person, but definitely don't compare the way I'm raising my children to the way you're doing it. You may not have the same economical status as I do, and I may be able to give them more things. It doesn't mean that the children will even um, be able to think at a higher capacity. It, it doesn't. It just doesn't mean that they're going to come out better, mm-hmm. I would say, yeah. for lack of a better term. Yeah. It doesn't mean that necessarily. Right. Now, there are some cases and situations where if I can give you more when you're younger and if I could teach you um, things that are going out in the world and not try to um, keep you from things, because some parents try to overprotect mm-hmm. their children, you know, and they may try to, um, you know, protect them from all the evils of the world. But is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Is it so when they do go out or off to college and they're facing facing all these things, they don't know how to deal with it. So talk about that a little bit. Do do you think there's a such thing as overprotecting or overshielding your children from the outside world? And how far should we go with that? What do you think about Well, I probably have a viewpoint that not a lot of other people share on that because God led us, um, my oldest is 24 Mm -hmm. and God led us when he was little starting kindergarten to homeschool. Okay. So I have three kids. We've homeschooled all three children. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, the idea of sheltering your child, Mm -hmm. I think, I think there is, a way to do it Mm -hmm. that's not I don't know it's it's like I don't want to misspeak how I'm trying to say it we 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 wanted to control the environment that our children were raised in Mm -hmm. because we wanted to be able to raise them in the word the way we saw fit and but the thing that we did not do was we did not seclude them Mm -hmm. from the world and when we saw things or things came up that we had to deal with, with, you know, they had friends who were all over the place. And so mm-hmm. situations we talked about at home. Mm-hmm. We, and that, that's one of the things that I would say, too, is I know a lot of kids are not really like they don't want to open up. They don't want to talk to parents and stuff. But don't quit trying to talk to your children. Right. Have open communications with them. And when a situation arises that is a situation, especially if it's contrary to the word, Mm -hmm. talk through it with your kids. Mm -hmm. Show them in the word why this is. Don't say, you know, like the whole, you're not doing it because I said so. Mm -hmm. There's a time and a place for that because you are the parent and you have the final say. Mm -hmm. And you can see the big picture. Just like we don't understand everything that God doesn't let us do sometimes because we're not God. Right. And so he sees the bigger picture. And so as the parent, we have the opportunity of seeing a bigger picture than the child does. Mm-hmm. But when it's when you're able to say, look, it says right here, this is why this is not something we're going to partake in. Mm-hmm. Then and again, that that's not to say that just because you're having those conversations, you're not going to ever deal with that issue again. Right. But it's so important to to talk to your children about the things that are going on and about the trials and the hardships. And I think, I think sheltering to a degree, and I don't know if that's the right term to use or not, Mm -hmm. but I think that there are some degrees that can be detrimental, like you say, Mm -hmm. but then there are also some degrees that I feel like if you're not careful, you give, you give too much. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I mean, there's a balance. And again, I would say with everything, it all comes back to, as the parent, just continuing in prayer and asking God to show you where to go with your child. Because just like you were saying, like we as parents are different, mm-hmm. but all of our children are different too. Right. I mean, all of the kids that were in my house are all three very different. Mm-hmm. And so I handle different situations different with different ones. Mm-hmm. 
So it's, it's very, it's all about us keeping the conversation with God forefront and, and just constantly. And some days it's just like, you don't really know what you're going to do. You, right. <laughs> you feel like you're at your wit's end. Right. And then other days, you're like, okay, God, I, yeah, we got this, you know. And I mean, I can remember there being a time when my kids were little that I was just like, man, I really see where it would be really easy just to give up on this because right. it's just so it's such a struggle to try to stay in there and keep reinforcing and keep reinforcing when they're little. Mm -hmm. But right. there are times that I look back and I'm like, oh my goodness, if I could just tell my young self. <laughs> right. It's okay. <laughs> right. You're going to get through this. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I do think, um, even though we raise our children differently, I do think that there are some basic guidelines and a basic foundation that every parent should have that, that particular tool and skill for their children. But it doesn't mean that um, the way that they are training them and the role that they're taking, the path has to be the same because right. it's going to be different because right. your children are different. Right. But that basic foundation, making sure you love them, making sure you are not um, demeaning them, mm -hmm. making sure that you know you are, are giving them the best of what you can give them, the best of, 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 of your knowledge and your skills, you are passing that on to your children. Making sure that they can be successful. Mm -hmm. That's a basic tool that they can, a basic guideline. Making sure that they get the education. Mm -hmm. Making sure that they are uh, clothed, fed, you know, yeah. sheltered. Yeah. You know, some of the basic things that just making sure that you're, you're putting, placing positivity into their lives. Mm -hmm. But the thought that you were given, that brings me to my first audience question. So, everyone that is on Facebook, um, we are tuning in and we have you here and we definitely want you to um, add your comments and add, you know, share and uh, post questions that you may have. Now, we're not claiming to be experts, um, but we're going to do the best that we can. Um, so if you have a question, if you have a thought or just a general statement that you would like to share, we can read it off um, uh, live for you on this morning. So my first audience question and you can place your answer in the box, um, is should parenting styles change as society changes? I say that again. Should your parenting style change as society change? Because society, it changes from year to year, from season to season, and sometimes from day to day. Yes. <laughs> you know, you never know what society is coming, you know, what's yeah. going to happen in society. Should our styles be changing? Should we be going... With the flow, or should we, um, or not necessarily even go with the flow, but are there things that are happening in the world? Just like clothing. Yes. From generation to generation, the clothing style changes. Yes. Um, and that's, you know, something that society, you know, they see it on television, they yeah. see it on movies. Um, so, you know, and, and should other things, uh, hairstyles change, uh, different things change. Mm -hmm. So, as a parent, should we be, no, that's not how I was raised. I caught, I will be honest. I caught myself saying, that's not how I was raised, and I'm not going to raise you that way. Oh, I'm yeah. going to raise you how, I, I mean, maybe I still do it sometimes, yeah. I don't know, but because I, I feel, I may be caught in that a little bit, yeah. because sometimes I feel like, um, you just can't have free will at everything, you know, and I wasn't raised like that. I wasn't raised to talk back to my parents, oh, yeah. and, you know, I wasn't raised to do a lot of things. You know, I wasn't raised to wear bedroom shoes in the in the grocery store <laughs> I, I, in pajamas. My dad, yeah. I, when I, I did it one time, and I was driving, I was in high school. My dad caught me in the grocery store with bedroom shoes on, and he gave me at probably <laughs> 17 years old a what for, like what Andy Griffin said. He gave me a what for, and I've never done it again, even at the age of 49. Now, I've never I've never worn bedroom shoes again. I remember that. He said, we don't do that. Yeah. You know, and I, I taught my children that don't go out in, in your bed clothes and head scope. You know, that's, yeah. that's hot. But... When I see it out in the community, especially for college students now, yes, I still <laughs> preach yeah. to my children. We don't do that. Yeah. We're not doing that. Yeah. It's just an image, you yeah. know. It's 
So tell me what are your thoughts. Let me see. I'll be checking Facebook to see if you have any questions or to see if you have an answer to that. Should parenting styles change as society changes? Hmm. I think that you mentioned the basic guidelines and foundations. Mm -hmm. I think there are some things that are never changing mm -hmm. because God's word never changes. Right. But I think that there are other things that you, so to speak, have to pick your battles on. Mm -hmm. And you know there are there are things that I wasn't allowed to do. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I was allowed to do that I have have had or have not allowed my children to do, mm -hmm. and it's it's one of those things where you just have to. It's just it's like I feel like you have to handle a lot of situations mm -hmm. in light of eternity. Mm -hmm. What difference is this going to make? Mm -hmm. And so, I feel like again, I I don't mean to be like using this as a cop out, but I, I just feel like it's one of those things that you just have to ask God for wisdom. And I just think that there are some things you can give on. There are some things that in society, at the end of the day, it's mm -hmm. not detrimental to your child's core person, right. value, well-being, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then on the things that are, like I would, you don't change on those things. Right. Right. And like I said, God's word is never changing. So those things should never change. Right. And so I think you just, I mean, I think that comes to a thing where, Again, you know, you're, you just, it may be different from one child to the next. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. you just kind of have to wade through it as, right. as you go. <laughs> we, need, we need to also <laughs> add support to that foundation. Um, we talked about love and we talked about um, showing, being positive to our kids. Um, we also need to show supporting our children and uh, teaching them God's word. I left that one out. We need to make sure that they have a spiritual foundation and make sure that they are that they know the way of the Lord. You know, right. we need to know, make sure that they know the Bible, you right. know, and what God teaches in His Word. Right. And, and a lot of times, just that alone can take a child a long way. You know, it, right. it, it, it can kind of hinder a child as well because what's going to happen when they're not around their parent? Can they stand alone? Right. Can they? You know, the peer pressures of this world oh, is just yeah. so great. And we haven't even, that's another topic, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. peer pressures of this world for, yeah. our, for our children. So, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, just just parenting the styles that, you know, and trying to change the society. That's pressure on us, mm -hmm. too, because our children, they will come and, and they will put a little pressure on us and say, well, everybody else parents so they oh, yeah. do it. I've oh, heard yeah. that a oh, many yeah. times. <laughs> I remember saying that to my mom. Well. So and so gets to do it. Yeah. And so well, I'm not so and so's mom. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, well, I, I'm going to share one example. I, I told Erin I'm not going to tell her business. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell her business, but I'm just going to share one example. You know, when my you know daughter, you know, just being a teenager, want to go out with her friends, and I and I I'm old school. Who, what, when, where, why? You know how, how many? Right, how many? Yeah. I'm gonna ask those questions, yes. and she told me that well, the other parents don't ask their children who they're hanging out with. They just let them go. I'm like, well, that's not how I was raised. That's, yeah. that's my answer to her. Well, yeah. that's not how I was raised, and I'm not doing this. You know, I'm not doing that. I need yeah. to know who, what, when, where, why. And I tried to explain to her, not just to say because I said so. Right. I tried to explain to her. Um, well, what happens if you get in a, a, a accident? Right. Um, and the police asks me a question and says, uh, well, who was she with? What type of car was she driving? Right. Where did they go? Right. Um, and what color, what outfit did she have on? Right. You know, and I don't know these things, and that's why it's important not, you know, not to try to sneak behind your parents' back and change clothes when you're right. you know, out and about. We don't, I, I don't have a description for the police right. officer if you don't you know, share with me if you don't ask me. So, a lot of times, um, you do need to stick to some of those things that you was writing because the old school is great. It's a good school. <laughs> now, that's my philosophy. Old school is good school. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these changes, some some of these changes, I just can't get with, Laura. Yeah. You know, I just, I can't do it. But, um, yeah, I am not the hip mom, for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I've tried to change, you know, a little bit, you know. But my daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, she 
she definitely reminds me, you know, that, um, you know, it's, it's different, you know, the way, you, and I can see it myself because I know that society, I know the world is changing. Mm -hmm. I can see something that I did with my second child that I didn't do with my first child mm -hmm. and, you know, things that I'm trying to do for the better and I'm trying to make it different. Mm -hmm. And I try to explain that, well, I'm, I, 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 when you know better, you do better mm -hmm. and you, you try, you're trying to make amends or you're trying to, or, or not necessarily make amends, but you're just trying to to get it right this time, you know, and you, you're just trying to do a better job. And we do feel guilty as parents, oh, yeah. you know, and we, we don't want to make the same mistake that we made before. Right. And it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's peer pressure on us as well, you know, so uh, I will say that. And I, uh, Miss Allen said she definitely agrees with dealing with um, each child differently um, because each child is different and requires different attention. So I agree with that. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Um, okay, so the next question. You ready for the next question? Sure. Okay, so how do you punish without destroying the child's spirit? How do you punish your child without destroying their spirit? I'm going to get my thought first. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I would say Make sure that you are not belittling them, first of all. Make sure that you're not punishing them out of anger. I've been guilty of that. Uh, and I can tell when I punish my child, like, you know, I, I didn't spare the rod, Roy. I, I'll just say that. But I would bite my lip. And that meant, I, and I really, and when I <laughs> finished spanking my child, I realized I was angry oh, because yeah. I was holding my, yeah. my, I was biting my, my lip and I was like, why is it my bottom of my mouth hurt? You know? <laughs> and I and I had I did that several times and I and I you know, I guess God just began to reveal to me, you were angry. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to wait. Yeah. Go sit down, parents, and, and, and take a breather and don't punish your child. If you're mad with your child, do not punish them right away. You know, yeah. you, you need to wait, you need to sit it out. And um even uh, a spanking may not always be the answer. Right. You, there are different alternatives to punishing your child. It doesn't always have to be, um, you know, uh, spanking or uh, whipping your child. A lot of times, parents get carried away, mm -hmm. and then they have a heavy hand. And then there are certain places, and I know some parents may say, you can't tell me where to, um, you know, whip my child. There are certain places you are not supposed to hit your children. And certain places that um, the law says it's okay, you know. Uh, I believe the 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 arm and it, the the buttocks and maybe the legs. I'm not sure. And um, definitely, it's definitely not the back. It's definitely not the face, and not the stomach or anything like that. So it's you know it's like two places probably. So I we have you know you 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 hear cases all the time where. It turns into abuse, mm -hmm. and then the parent would say, "Well, I was just punishing them." But you, <laughs> you just have to be careful. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful. There's other ways. Um, there are other alternatives. You can um, take some things from them. Mm -hmm. Take their phone from them. You can, um, you know, just not let them go out with their friends. You know, there there are many different things that you can do to punish your child. It doesn't always have to be, you know. Spanking. Um, and, and children are different. They respond differently. Right. Some, some, a child may look at you like, that didn't hurt. You yeah. know, like, and it, yes. and it may not even do them any good. Right. If it's not working, right. then stop. Try something else. Right. You know, that that's not the answer to everything. So I will say that. But making sure that you're not angry when you're punishing your child is, is big. Mm -hmm. I think that um, you need to just kind of make sure that you are uplifting them. It, even if you Whatever punishment you give them, go back a little later and talk to them. Do you understand why I punished you? Mm -hmm. uh, or or say it ahead of time, I'm punishing you because right. this is what you did and mama and daddy doesn't approve mm -hmm. of this. We don't approve of, you know, explain it. Right. Um, and I know a lot of times we are used to saying, or in the past we were used to saying, because I said so. Yeah. That's not going to cut it right now. That's a change that society, you know, yeah. These kids now, the children, the times children, are very different. Yeah, they, that's, they want to know why. Yeah. And our second child likes to know why. 
yeah. to why all the time. <laughs> She's a why person, you know. She wants to know why. So, um, we also have another um audience member, Miss uh Miss Angie says, in our society and in the church system, continuing support for parents is lacking. Yes, mm -hmm. it is lacking. It is lacking. So, um, what do you think? Um, as far as how do you punish without destroying a child's school? Um, I totally agree with what you said about the, you know, first of all, the spanking is not the answer to every situation right. mm -hmm. and it's not the answer with every child. Right. Um, but I, that is something that I probably would say looking back because I was young as a new mom mm -hmm. and I was, I had my first child at 22, so I was still immature myself in a lot of ways, and I had a little bit of a, an anger issue. I, I wasn't just like, it was like when something would set me off, I would just like, oh. you know, it was just, I could feel it just mm -hmm. inside, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, my first child was older than I wish he had been. But that is something that the Lord delivered me from. That is something that I, I prayed. Um, I, when my kids were little, I went to a Tuesday morning prayer group, um, a ladies' prayer group. And through that time in that prayer group, if nothing else, if God didn't do anything else in my life, and he did, but if, he, if nothing else, that coming out of it and him delivering me from that where... I could remain calm because I was, we're a loud bunch anyway. Um, our immediate family, but also my siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, you know, I come from a loud family. And so we're kind of loud anyway. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was a, a yeller and would would shout and yell and holler. And I, I did, there were times that I was like, you know what, you just need to go to your room. Because right. I need a minute and right. you need a minute. Right. But I, I did do more yelling and hollering mm -hmm. than I wish I had. Okay. And so after after the fact and, and, and coming through that and God delivering me from that, mm -hmm. it 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 was a, it's amazing how much easier it is to handle a situation when you can stay calm. Right. And that goes to anybody, not just to your children, well, not just dealing with your kids. But when you can stay calm and being able to say, I'm not yelling at you, so I need you not to yell at me. Right. We're, we're talking through this. Right. We're having a discussion here. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, um, yeah, but I mean, I, I think, you know, don't don't be critical. And this Again, these are things dealing with any person, not just your children, but especially your children because... The role you have as their parent, mm -hmm. and especially their mom, saying critical things, your words, you know, words can leave such a lasting impact on children. Yes. And I mean, there are some things that I say sometimes, I'm like, oh man, I wish I had not said that. And but you can't take it back. Right. It's already out there. And they'll bring it back up. Oh, <laughs> they will. My grown son loves to bring things back up. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I mean, and again. You're gonna make mistakes, yeah. and we we didn't have perfect parents. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect parents, right. and God knows that. And the Holy Spirit is there to he he's gonna he picks up way before we leave we leave off. He's right. there the whole time, mm -hmm. and so um, that's you know I, I just feel like again prayer mm -hmm. is so important and and so. It's really like the bedrock of everything. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just I, I totally agree with the words that we speak and and the tone and how we handle everything is so important. Yeah, I agree with that tone because um, choosing the right tone and making sure that you are um, actually ready to have a, a decent, peaceful conversation is is key. Because sometimes I will, we can intimidate our children, mm -hmm. and they could be afraid of us as mm -hmm. parents. And you, you really don't want you want your children to grow up knowing that you love them, and you want them to love you back. But you don't want them to be afraid of you their entire life. Right. And I know, you know, there are some children that they're just afraid of their parents, mm -hmm. and even just counseling, you know, in in the school system, you know, I <laughs> I may even ask them, I'm like. You know, I have to call your parents now. Which one do you want me to call? Do you yeah. want me to call your mama or your dad? Yeah. They said, call my mama. 
<laughs> or you don't call my dad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because they know, you know, yeah. they know, but you can't intimidate your child. And I, I, there is a fine line. There's a, there's a line. Um, and we have to work towards that mm -hmm. to not to, to mean business, to let them know that this is the rule without scaring them or intimidating them. And I would also say on the flip side of that, to encourage your children mm -hmm. and and compliment them when they do good mm -hmm. because I've, I've seen I know people in my life who have like they're grown mm -hmm. or you know adult young adults whatever but they still have that feeling that no matter what they do it's not good enough for their parents right and so the, the discipline and all is one half of the relationship mm -hmm. you have to encourage them and tell them you're proud of them right. and and let them know on a regular basis that you love them regardless you know it's like nothing you're gonna do is gonna change my love for you right and but when they do positive things when they do good things when there are things that that you can give a compliment mm -hmm. for exactly. that's just as important right. as the discipline and the right. correction too. You have to acknowledge that. Yeah. Yes. Um, and Angie said partnering with God and leading in love is necessary. Absolutely. All right. Next question. And we're almost done, you guys. <laughs> um, next question. How much should a parent become involved after high school? Like, should you still be involved in your child's life? Should you be controlling? Should you know? How? Now I know you have. Two, they have graduated. Yes. Two are out of school. Yes. So how much? And I have a stepdaughter who's older. Okay. Already two. So we have three that are already adults. Okay. <laughs> Do you think it's necessary, or does it depend on the type of uh, support that child needs? I definitely think it depends on the type of support. <laughs> okay. And this is interesting because we just had a little bit of a conversation with our oldest child. The other day about something that we were still doing for our middle child <laughs> okay who and and you know it's i mean there's a big difference if your child is in college mm -hmm. and not working a job right. and still somewhat dependent on you as a parent right. right versus married with their own kids in their own household and they're they're already dependent right. i mean they're all independent mm -hmm. with their own family right worlds apart right but I mean, I would say that even even our grown children, there's times where if they still needed the support of their parents mm -hmm. in any way, if we can help, we're going to. Right. But to meddle right. and to say, oh, you need to be doing this this way. Right. And you need to be doing this this way. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we have four grandchildren to, to, to give our opinion on parenting mm -hmm. or anything. That is not our place. Right. And so... Um, you know, with the one who is in college, she's an adult. Mm -hmm. She makes her own decisions. She she basically, I mean, she lives on her own. She's five hours away. I, I can't micromanage her. Right. You know, and so there comes a time when, and again, every child is different, yes. where little by little you're giving more independence for them. Mm -hmm. And there, there's got to come a time when, you aren't responsible anymore right. because they're making their own choices. Right. You and you can't, history. yeah, you can't, it's, it's two-sided. Mm -hmm. You can't try to still micromanage them, mm -hmm. but you also can't still blame yourself for choices they may be making. Right. Because maybe you didn't do everything that you should have done. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're hearing some of this and you're thinking about scriptures that maybe you weren't even saved when your children were little. Right. And so you didn't raise them early mm -hmm. in a foundation of the word, but there comes a time when if they know and they have heard and you have done your best to introduce them to the word, mm -hmm. their choices are on them and they're not on you anymore. Right. And so that's a very hard place to be too because it's hard when our children make decisions that we know are, are not going to be good for them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to, I mean, sometimes you just have to be, you have to be there to love and support in any way you can, but they have to walk through it themselves. Right. That's so true. That can be hard. It can be hard to watch. Right. But I will say for any young adults out there, um, 
you're still a part, you know, you, it, it goes for you too, because if you're not on your own, <laughs> then you're considered as being one of the, a young adult child, you know. So, if you don't want us to meddle, <laughs> then you can't bring, you're going to have to show some responsibility, <laughs> and you're going to have to go out and, you know, get your job and, and show us that you can do it on your own and show the, us that you can be responsible Oh, we're gonna meddle. <laughs> That's just you know a little sidebar for you. We're gonna meddle, um, young people. If you are not, um, if you look like you need a little help and a little support, and you're you know you're not quite getting it yet, we're gonna give you a little advice. And I will say this also: if you tell your parents your business, that is a gateway, and you're asking us to meddle. Right. You're asking us for help, so that's what we're gonna give you. And you say right up front, I'm, I just need to mend. Right. I don't need you to tell me the solution. Right, right. You got to say it up front. I just need you to, I just need you to listen. listen. You know, I gave my, I actually gave my children permission to just say, Mom, I just want you to listen. Yeah. And because they kept saying after the fact that I'm always giving them advice and they just want to be heard. Yeah. And so I said, Oh, you didn't want it. You didn't want any advice. <laughs> And so I, I gave them permission. I said, well, just tell me before you start. Mom, I want to talk to you, but I just want you to listen. Yes. And, and I, I remember that. And I just sit, you know, quiet. Yeah. Sometimes I want to say something <laughs> so bad. But um, I don't. I respect yeah. that. Decision. My daughter had to do that, too. She's like, I don't need you to solve every right. And sometimes it's not even, like, a really a problem that needs to be solved. It's just mm -hmm. something that's just frustrating to her. She's like, you don't have to have an answer to everything. Right. I just need somebody to talk to about it. Right, right. That's true. All right, moving right along. Um, now we're gonna answer this next one real quick. Hopefully. <laughs> it says, How and what should a parent do when they have been living their their life desires through their child? Mm -hmm. Now, um, I realized I didn't know I was living, but I, I'm not gonna say a lifelong dream, but I didn't know that I was excited about Jen, my, my baby girl, Ariel. I didn't know I was excited about her being a cheerleader um, and seeing it all the way through until she decided not, to not cheer me. Oh. And I was hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I was hurt more than she was. <laughs> and I didn't know that. I, yeah. And I was like, I was trying my best to just get her back on. She wanted to work, you know, and I was trying to get, I was trying my best, Laura. I just wanted to see her. Her senior year, they have that picture. Yes. They have a big picture on their fence. <laughs> and I and I look for those days when she was in middle school. I used to see the seniors. Yeah. I said, oh, one day my baby's going to do that. <laughs> and and I, I didn't realize that I, that it was embedded. And she was like, oh, no, I got, no, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to move on. I'm, you know, and because she's been cheering since uh, after school with the after, after school program. Mm -hmm. um, and as a, as a kindergarten. You know, she's oh, been wow. cheering every year, so yeah. I was looking forward to her seeing you. <laughs> and I was hurt. Yeah. I was disappointed. And and when she told me that, I was like, was that my dream? Oh, yeah. You know, and I had to tell her. She's not, she doesn't even, she's not even regretful. You know, yeah. like, and, and so, and I had to. I had to take some time for myself <laughs> <laughs> because I was disappointed. So that kind of, um, I thought about that, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Um, so how, how and what should a parent do? Well, I personally, to answer that question, I just had to realize it. I had to um, come into now and realize and I had to take some time for myself and I had to accept it. Yeah. It's just, you're going to have to accept it. Yeah. You know, if, they, if that's not their dream, don't force them right. to keep doing a sport or to, you know, do a certain thing. If that's not them, it's you. Just mm -hmm. accept it. Yeah, yes. I, I agree. I think that I think that the hard part, the hard situation is if a parent doesn't realize that they're doing that. Mm -hmm. But um, I definitely think that they're. I mean, it, it's a lot of situations like that where, especially if they're doing something you did as a child, mm -hmm. or maybe they're doing something you always wished you could have done, mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, and and yeah, I agree. I mean, you don't, you really don't have a choice. But to accept it, or you're gonna put a lot of strain on the relationship. Right, right. Um, and that also includes trying to make your child go to the same college that mm -hmm. you went to, or follow behind your step, your business. Mm -hmm. You know, want you want them to you set it, set it the path for them, and they. I don't want to do, do this that. truck driving business. Yeah. I don't want to go to this particular college, and 
And it does hurt, but you have to realize they're their own individual right. and they have to make their own decision. Right. And you will put a strain. That's right. You know, they just want to stop coming around. They, they may not want to call. Yeah. So don't do that to your children. No, no peer pressure. <laughs> you know, try to stay off of that. Um, all right, last question. You take this question. Oh, goodness. <laughs> what if two parents disagree on parenting styles? That is a tough one. Comment in, <laughs> come, come in on the line, people. Read it again. What if two parents disagree on parenting styles? Um, I think that's, that is a difficult situation. Yeah. And that is where the parents, as the adults, have a lot of work to do to get to common ground. Yes. And I would say the number one thing is both parents have to be willing to give up some of their desires. I mean, you, you have to, if you're over here and you're, the other parent is over here, mm -hmm. in order to get in the middle, you have to both give some things. Right. And so you just have to be, I mean, it's kind of like any other circumstance that you're dealing with trying to come to common ground, you're going to have to compromise. And so, um, Definitely. which again, coming from the perspective that we're coming at, it's all done through prayer yes. and, and the word of God. I, I don't, I think that the things, again, the, those basic guidelines and foundations, you're, you're not sacrificing those things. Right. But, um, and also too, it could be very difficult in a situation with like divorce or something yes. where the parents are two different houses and the child is back and forth between the two houses, it can be difficult. And that's, we, we dealt with a situation like that. Um, you know, the, our oldest mm -hmm. was not with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it, there were things that we did, we had to do differently with her mm -hmm. just because of the circumstances. Right. And so, um, it can be tough, but it, it, you can work it out right. there. You just have to work on it. Right. Yeah. I think communication is the key Yeah, and not arguing argument in front of the child about the yes. right right yes. don't don't just so can i talk to you <laughs> and oh, I'm I'm somewhere else. Yeah. yeah you talk to them away from the child the yes. child doesn't need to know that you all disagree right because that, they a certain play. child yes the they certain play type of child will definitely play that yes make Absolutely. sure you do it away from the child yeah. and come back together uh, in in unison you know in unity so um, Laura, I thank you for, yes. for joining us today. <laughs> it was wonderful. Um, I really enjoyed it. We're going to have to have you back. Because we, <laughs> we didn't talk about the peer pressures of this world oh, for, for a child. So we're going to have to you know, do a part two one day. Um, you know, later. later. Yes, yes. So I really appreciate you for yes, coming out. Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Do you have any final words for the people? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in, for training up your child in the way that they should go. For when they are old, they shall not depart. Go back and read Proverbs 22 and 6. Make sure you're keeping up with your prayer life, asking God to help you, help you um, train up your child, help you to um, you know, to just search yourself and if there's anything that's not like him, he needs to take it away from you because we want to make sure that we're walking in, in, in God's path and we're training our children up the way God wants us to train them up. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. All right. Until next time, guys, we'll see you. We love you and bye. <laughs> Thank you.